them these questions. You may have heard them before, but now we're looking at them here together as a group. Okay? Here we go. So here are our questions. First of all, a general one. Where are you all from? Like, uh, are you from Liversol? Where, where are you staying at the moment? Who's Liversol people? Hands up. Liversol people? Out of towners? Who's out of town people? Where are you from? Lacosia. And then, Lanaka, anywhere else? Papos? Papos? Yay, you're from Papos. So, welcome everybody. Right, so that's our general question. The next one is when we go deeper is if you were to die tomorrow, would you be at peace with how you have lived your life so far? Yes? No? No? Yes. If you were going to die tomorrow, if you knew that you were going to die tomorrow, would you be at peace with how you have lived your life so far? No. No. <laughs> so let's just have a hands up for who's a no. No. Does anybody want to share why it's a no? Like just not, not a story, but just with one word. I'm not happy with or I haven't done such and such. Does anyone want to share? Anybody? No? No. Does anybody else want to share a reason why? No? Okay, that's fine. Fair enough. Okay, question two. Are you alive or are you truly living? I'm alive. Are you alive or are you just alive? That means, in other words, like just going through the motions or are you truly living? Alive. Yeah, and there's some people who are like in transition. Really? Okay, that's interesting. Anyone else? No? Trying to move towards the, the, the living as opposed to. Um, yeah, okay, alright. So these are these deep, profound questions that when you go away from here, you know, you, you want to really be thinking about them because just these questions alone are going to navigate you to being in the right place. Yeah? Are you doing what you love? This is question three. Are you doing what you love? Yeah? Not showing off again, just saying, right? So who isn't? There's quite a few no's, right? Yeah? Not too sure yet. Sorry? Not sure yet. Not sure yet? Okay. And that's why a lot of us come to these festivals, isn't it? To like try and disclose and find out a little bit more. Yeah? Okay. Number four. If we're here to learn from our mistakes, then why are we so afraid of making mistakes? In case yeah. we make more. Sorry? In case we make more. In case we make more. <laughs> okay. Because we're afraid of the experience of pain. Afraid of the experience of pain. Yeah. That's usually the most important thing, isn't it? You're usually afraid of the pain element. Yeah. So um, the thing is, is because if there's full of that in life, we then need to like address, let's say, Okay, well, you know, I don't know what's coming, but I need to make this change. Change can be painful, <coughs> but I need to make that leap anyway, because if I don't, then what happens? Stagnation. Stagnation. So, that's um, very, very important for us. <coughs> so, knowing I will die, generally, how should I live? General question, how should I live? I know I'm going to die. Shouldn't we like be in peace? Shouldn't we like be in joy? Shouldn't we be doing what we loved, addressing all those previous questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's stopping us, guys? What's stopping us? Yeah. But isn't it also like society issues as well? Things like the matrix and being forced to do a nine to five job. I'm just giving an example, right? So we're totally sucked into what it is that we should and what we must do. Our conditioning, do you know what I mean? Our programming, you know, got to get up, got to go to work, suit and tie, bring in the dough, bring in the money, you know, all of this stuff. And it puts us into these positions that create all kinds of social anxiety, yeah? Whereas before we never had that, we lived in a really natural world. Now I'm not saying that we can go back to that world, although we could if we wanted to, but what I am saying is that we need to become absolutely much
much more aware of what it is that's going on in the world, who the manipulators are, and perhaps that's one of us. Perhaps we are invested in one of these systems. Maybe we'll go, oh, wait. okay. Uh, what I've been doing perhaps ain't for the highest good. Ain't, there's my, there's my little London coming out. Ain't for the highest good. Yeah, and perhaps I need to come out, but we're so heavily invested in that thing that we can't get out of it. We need to address it. <coughs> because it's you guys that are going to change not just your own state, but the state of the world to come by doing that. Yeah? Okay. Is it worse to fail or to never try? Even if it's painful, isn't it? So, yeah. So if you don't try, you will never ever know what's out there. And as far as this 3D reality is concerned that we live in, this is all there is. I know there's more, but I mean for us lot who are living in the 3D, you've got to make the best of it. And you know what? I learned all of this profoundly from being so sick with the multiple sclerosis. I learned to appreciate, to be in the rapture of appreciation, not for the money and the house and the nice things it no, for the air that I breathe, for the fact that I can open and close my eyes and that I can see the clear blue sky and the clouds in it. That kind of rapture of appreciation. Okay? And so, it's definitely worth, um, worse to stay or fail. It doesn't matter. And perhaps failure is just a perception anyway. It's probably not real. It's just a perception. Because all your failures are actually stepping stones to improve you, aren't they? In reality, isn't that what it is? Yeah? So, how about this one? This is the last one. Am I holding on to past pain or future fears? So now I'm going to explain that to you a little bit more academically. Okay, you've got your right brain and you've got your left brain. Okay. Now the left brain is in charge of putting everything in order, all of the memories, all of the conditioning and the programming, that stuff I talked about earlier on. Your past, um, perhaps, um, projections that we make into the future, do you know what I mean, about what it is that's going to happen to me because of what happened to me in the past. That's all your left academic logic brain doing the talking. Shut up! No, you need it as well. I'm not saying you do need it. Did you know that the left and the right brain, the two hemispheres, are completely separate? Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. So the right brain, on the other hand, that's the one that is connected to that. That's the one that knows this. It knows the connection to primary source. It knows that your soul is squeezed into this tiny little body when in fact your soul is something so huge and infinite that it's actually amazing that it's kind of contained in this physical vehicle. So with Fusion 7 healing practices, generally speaking, whether you are doing sessions or whether you are doing workshops or lessons, what we are doing is we are reprogramming and retraining the two hemispheres of your brain, among the many other things, because everything's energy, right? But your right brain is in charge of this consciousness, which is bigger than your brain. Like your brain is kind of like pulling the strings, but it's much bigger than what's in here. And you connect to all of that again. So it's kind of like a reconnection process to everything that you ever were, are, and ever it's a reconnection process to everything that ever was, is, and to ever become. That's what we do. And that is what my intention is in this work, in the classes, in the sessions, and in the lessons. So those were the questions. And just to finish the questioning off, off with a little statement, the statement is, is the biggest gift that you can offer to yourself and to this world at large is your own transformation. So whatever it is that works for you, don't stop. Okay? So that is the bit 
with the questions. <laughs>